Hey there YouTube, this is going to be my second light rail video and I'm doing it because I got a couple of requests to tell you guys in more detail the exact components I used in putting together my $45 light rail system. So in this video I'm going to be giving a detailed list of the components I used, where I got them from, how much they cost, and a couple of tips and tricks in getting all these components together into a functioning system. <laughs> Here's a short list of those components I used. It consists of an 8-foot sliding door rail set that came with the rollers and screws you normally use to install a closet door, a DPDT or dual position double throw on-on 6-pin -on toggle switch, which will actually change the direction of your motor from going clockwise to counterclockwise when the toggle is hit, a 1 1 inch 2-hole conduit strap or pipe U bracket. This will hold the motor against your piece of wood or whatever you're using uh, to attach your motor and power supply to. And then a power supply, which I recommend being a cell phone charger, anything that will match the voltage and roughly the amperage of uh, your motor, which is 12 volts and around uh, 400, 700 milliamps, which is about the standard amperage for a typical uh, charger. The amperage doesn't matter so much as long as it's under one amp and a DC motor tends to only use the amount of amperage that is required by the motor. Um, then you'll need a wheel with a six millimeter hole or whatever size uh, shaft your motor comes with. The motor that I am providing in the description link uh, to an eBay listing or eBay seller is that of a six millimeter shaft so I found that a, a Kinex wheel actually fit that uh, six millimeter hole pretty well and I just used some JB Weld glue to secure it onto that shaft. And then lastly you'll probably need a piece of wood to attach all these components to um, to build your light rail off of. I here, right here I have a DPDT on on toggle switch and I'm going to be soldering it to replace the slide switch that I initially installed on my on my light rail originally. This one only has an on on position. It, the middle one doesn't it doesn't have a middle position of off, which is what you need. Otherwise when your light rail hits a toggle it will just turn itself off instead of switching um, into the other direction. So here we go. First step to get some wire. Here I have uh, two pieces of wire and what I'm going to be doing is you see there's six pins at the bottom of it. I'm going to be putting two pieces of wire on the diagonal meaning on this one to this one and this one to this one. And I'm also going to be connecting these diagonal switches to my power supply. Um. Here's a diagram I made for you guys to illustrate how you're going to be wiring your DPDT switch. What you see in red is what I'm going to be doing right now and you can see there's two wires uh, crossing each other but not touching and those wires are going to be also connected to your power supply. And the two center pins are going to be what connect to your motor. If you pay close attention, you'll notice that I actually soldered them in parallel instead of crossing them. I went back and fixed the issue, I just didn't show it on camera. I'm going to apply a little bit of flux before I solder it. Warm up my soldering iron. It's also somewhat important to mention that you don't want to get a heavy duty switch because they tend to be more difficult to turn over or to switch from one direction to the next. 
The switch I'm using is actually uh, defined as a mini uh, toggle switch, which is easier to turn over than uh, these red wires some other ones. are going to be going to my power supply, which is here. Your power supply is going to have a negative and positive, which will affect uh, what direction clockwise and counterclockwise will be, depending on how the switch is toggled. And that matters um, depending on how you install your switch on your device. Just be aware, aware of that and get it uh, correct on how you're going to mount it to uh, your piece of wood, if that makes any sense. And now the two center pins go to my motor. I'm going to apply my solder, making sure that none of the pins are touching. Now that the hardest part of soldering the switch is over, let's talk about the rail itself. The rail was a set which came with screws and these four rollers you can see here highlighted in red. Now those rollers came with a metal and plastic piece attached which I removed and here's a piece that you can see which removes from those rollers. And now I took the rectangular roller piece which remained and bent it into a 90 degree angle as you can see here and was able to screw that down onto my piece of wood. Now because I messed up two of the rollers I went to Home Depot and purchased this other roller set. Uh, which was able to screw in without bending anything. Next you have to screw your rollers to your piece of wood. I did that by marking the center of my piece of wood and spacing my rollers out so I knew the rail would be in the middle. If you end up buying the additional roller set, one thing to mention is that there's a small piece of metal, as you can see here, which actually grinds against the rail and prevents the rollers from moving smoothly. I solved that issue by taking a Dremel tool, a metal file, and removing that small section of the metal which allowed my rollers to move more freely. Now that that's done, let's talk about the motor. I purchased this one off eBay for $15 because they're in the US. You can buy them from Hong Kong and other places in China for around 8 with free shipping. I'll provide a link to an eBay seller in the description of this video if you're interested. Now to attach this motor to my a uh, piece of wood. I used a piece of conduit strapping that I purchased from Home Depot for like two dollars. It's a one one fourth inch which is just shy of the dimension of the upper gearbox of this motor. Now it's time to attach your wheel to your motor. I used a Kinex wheel which had a six millimeter hole and used glue to attach it to the shaft. You have a couple of options here. Um, the eBay seller that I mentioned provides a 6mm coupling which you can use with a set of wheels they also sell and use those to attach your wheel to your motor, although it does add cost. Here's a short video of everything attached and running. I'll leave it up to you as far as how you want to mount your light to your piece of wood. I used two pieces of mason's line and a couple of metal brackets I'd lying around but you can use whatever works for you. One other thing to mention is the actual toggles um, mounted to your rail. I just used uh, pieces of double-sided tape to stick them to the inside of my rail but it, the thing to note is that I used pieces of neoprene foam which you can see here are the little black pieces attached to the piece of wood. And that just acts as a spring, uh, which helps to flip the direction of your switch. Without them, your switch might get stuck and not uh, turn over. That's really all there is to my light rail system. There might be a couple of things I glossed over, but please just ask in the comments any questions you might have. Um, Till next time.